How did the media report during the emergency? Or did it report at all? After all, the media is called the fourth estate of a democracy. Now, groups like the Editors Guild of India were established after the emergency was lifted in 1978. Back in the day, television and radio were completely controlled by the government. There were no private TV channels, but there were many magazines and newspapers across the country, both regional and national, and they needed the support of the government to function. Their profits, indeed their survival, depended on ads from the government. So several leading dailies, which are now some big brands in India, towed the government line. They agreed with the imposition of the emergency. There were, of course, notable exceptions, both at the national and the state levels. The founder of Indian Express, Ramnath Goenka, famously stood his ground. So did a handful of other journals like The Statesman and Patriot. The other newspapers, meanwhile, wrote favorable articles on Indira Gandhi and her son, Sanjay Gandhi, who is said to have played a massive role during the emergency. And the newspapers that opposed emergency suffered huge economic losses because Indira Gandhi introduced something called the Monopoly and Restrictive Trade Practices Act. Under this act, the government reduced the supply of newsprint to media houses. So naturally, those papers which, which opposed the emergency struggled the most. Some of them printed their pages blank as a mark of protest. Others changed their format. They wrote non-news and trivia to highlight how journalism was at its, on its last legs under the emergency. Some papers used cartoons to highlight the assault on democracy and this cartoon, which we'll, this, this one which is on your screens right now, is an illustration of how Fakhruddin Ali Ahmed was just a rubber stamp president during the emergency. And this is just a sample. Several famous cartoonists like Abu Abraham, Rajinder Puri and R.K. Lakshman and also Ashok Dongre did what their counterparts could not do. They poked fun at authoritarianism, they pointed out how the emergency was just disguised dictatorship. Soon after the emergency was lifted, the newspapers that were struggling gained both in terms of credibility and business. It's another question whether the Editors Guild of India takes impartial and timely decisions today. But when it started, it started with a noble cause. And as we mark the 44th anniversary of the imposition of emergency in India, it's time to dwell on the role of these organizations, which are meant to protect the freedom of press.